That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to Google up the information I'm about to relay to you. This is Pete Santilli. I'm host of the Pete Santilli Show broadcast right here on Gorilla Media Network, Monday uh, through Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, And do us a favor, if you're subscribing to our YouTube channel, we will be providing additional reports as we dig into what I'm about to relay to you. Uh, This is going to be the first report of its kind uh, anywhere in the world, and there's a reason for that. Let me tell you why I've chosen to come forward with this information. First and foremost, the mainstream media, the U.S. military industrial complex, just about every aspect of our lives normally that we're, we're bombarded and flooded with the information that is nonsensical, that, that, that they want us to just, they want to distract us away from what is really going on in the world. We already know that case. Well, the reason why I'm concerned about this information I'm about to share with you is, is it's not being covered. Now, it has been covered in bits and pieces, and I've been following it uh, now for, uh, for many years, believe it or not. Uh, but let me share this with you and where I'm coming from. I'll give you an example. Uh, for instance, we just recently heard, now, by the way, this has to do with Yemen, okay? Uh, I just covered a report that the Saudis uh, have begun airstrikes near the, um, against the Houthi rebels in Yemen, okay? And then I started tying everything in it in together. We were looking at the map of Yemen. And then, lo and behold, we discovered where, um, where the Gulf of Aden is. Now, Gulf of Aden is directly outside of Yemen. And that triggered a response in my mind to look into it. And I started connecting all of the dots that, believe it or not, uh, are relating to a lot of the stories. We just heard of, for instance, the German wings crash in the French Alp. Uh, French Alps killing 150 people. Cockpit voice recorder. That's an anomaly. Um, There was a large debris field, um, which indicated that the plane broke up in midair. And the debris field, uh, and the reason why we can make that assumption that the plane broke up in midair, is that the debris field was uh, multiple kilometers wide. Okay, so planes don't do a hop, skip, and a jump and scatter debris over over, uh, multiple square miles. Uh, And additionally, uh, the flight recorders, which are built to withstand 3,400 Gs of force, were busted open. So if a plane breaks open in the air uh, and the flight uh, recorders are damaged in a midair type of explosion or whatever it is, it would have to exceed 3,400 Gs. That's what these flight recorders are designed to do. So we're thinking to ourselves and we're, you know, of course, uh, we can only... Uh, conspiracy analyze and conspiracy theorize about what's happening with a lot of these anomalies. And that's what we're going to do uh, in this uh, in this report here that I'm about to give you. I'm going to provide you with all the links, and here's my word of advisement to you. Um, you have to Google it up and see what you find. I'm not going to speak of, you know, aliens coming down or any weird anomalies. I'm going to refer to facts that have been presented to me, have run through my brain, and I'm just piecing them together for you. Now, remember, the CERN has been implicated because this French airplane crashed in the general vicinity, okay? And, and when you say general vicinity of CERN, just keep in mind that the main machine of CERN itself is the, it's the largest machine ever built in the history of mankind, and it's located uh, in the general vicinity, about a couple hundred miles away from where this plane crashed. It just so happened that, uh, that the CERN magnets, okay, that this collider was started up and it actually short-circuited the magnets. They had to actually shut it down. And that was right about the time that the plane crashed. So there were reports out there uh, asking, you know, were these two things connected? We don't know, but this is what we do know. When we start talking about CERN and we talk about the power of CERN, now we also need to recognize what the scientists are saying to us. Let me tell you what the scientists are actually saying to us, okay? That the Large Hadron Collider itself could detect extra dimensions, okay? And this is, uh, I'm putting it up on the screen for you. We'll provide all of the links to you. Interdimensional communication is something that these CERN scientists are looking to do. Now, they experimented with it when they first turned up uh, the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC or CERN. The first time they did it, let me tell you what one of the anomalies was, okay? And this is interesting, all right? Because this stuff is all tied in together. 
Uh, do you remember the spiral lights over Norway opening up? Uh, people refer to it as the Einstein-Rosen Bridge. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is not, you can sit there and, and make a determination on your own. Do I know if this is a rocket ship or not a rocket ship? This is one fact that I can present to each and every one of you, is that there's a lot of people that speculate and a lot of people, including governments, that are attempting to cover it up. Russia has said that it was one of their rockets and it was spinning and so on and so forth. One thing is absolutely certain is that we cannot say what it was or what it wasn't. But we do know that these spiral lights over Norway opening up are possibly related to CERN. And I'm going to show that to you. But let's just look at this thing. I'm just going to show you a picture of the Norway spiral lights. Now, keep this in mind. Okay, this spiral over Norway um, was detected, photographed, and I'm going to leave it on the screen here, and you make your determination here as, a, as to whether or not it's related to CERN, and then I'm going to tie in, believe it or not, Yemen in just a few moments, okay? Look at that hole opening up, okay? On the screen, it's a weird anomaly. You can't tell me what it is not or what it is. Nobody can. But what is interesting is that a lot of people reported this thing. Now, how does that relate to, uh, to Yemen, and I said to myself, I have to just piece this together in my mind based on the bits and pieces of information that have come about. And I'm going to share with you um, something that was released, okay, um, on, uh, on WikiLeaks, okay, uh, on WikiLeaks.org. Uh, now, now, also, I want to tie in something uh, relating to this WikiLeaks report. If you remember the pirate attacks that were occurring uh, off the coast of Somalia in 2008, that, I believe, was actually a false flag for what I'm about to describe to you because it, out, it caused militaries around the world to place ships in where? None other than the Gulf of Aden. The Gulf of Aden is right next to Yemen that we're talking about right now. Now, is this stuff all tied in together? We don't know that, but check this out. If you go to the Global Intelligence Report, the Global Intelligence ref, uh, Files on WikiLeaks.com, okay? There was a leak that was sent out through Stratford.com. And if you want to know who Stratford is, uh, well, I'm not going to spin off on a tangent on that one, but you know who that's connected to in alternative media. Uh, but they just happen to have this top secret inside information as to um, the communication that goes on between the Pentagon, governments, and so on and so forth. On Monday, February 27th, WikiLeaks began publishing the global intelligence file files. They released on, on two, uh, a report on 2-19-2013, a bizarre report pre uh, prepared for Prime Minister Putin by Admiral Maximov of Russia. Uh, the uh, Russia's northern fleet okay, states that a mysterious magnetic vortex currently centered in the Gulf of Aden has defied all combined efforts of Russia and China to shut it down or even to ascertain its exact origin or cause for being. The Gulf of Aden, okay, is one of the most vital water, waterways in the world, located in the Arabian Sea between Yemen on the south coast of the Arabian Peninsula in the Horn of Africa and sees over 21,000 ships sailing through its waters each year. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen, I'm trying to present facts to the best of my ability, not making any assumptions, okay? WikiLeaks released this internal cable report referring to a vortex in the Gulf of Aden. OK, we're not making any assumptions. I'm not just whipping this up, going based on somebody's cockamamie YouTube video uh, uh, assumption and, and conspiracy theory. We're not doing that. I'm actually going to give you the links to this stuff and you can match it all up. Now, is this anything significant? Who knows? Read this entire report. OK, after remaining relatively stable since the discovery in November of 2000, this report continues uh, the Gulf of Aden. OK. Uh, to, uh, to issue an extraordinary, extraordinary warning to the entire world about this mysterious occurrence in which, in response, the following nations rushed their naval forces to the area. And here are the naval forces that were rushed to the area. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is a top secret document that WikiLeaks found that Stratford was talking about. OK, this isn't a conspiracy theory. All right. The Royal Australian Navy, the People's Liberation Navy of China. The Navy, the Greek Navy, Japan Maritime Self Defense Forces, Royal Malaysian Navy, Portuguese Navy, Spanish Navy, the Royal Navy 
uh, of the uh, of uh, the UK as well as the United States Navy, all convened where in the Gulf of Aden. Why did they convene there? Because of a vortex stated in this document. Don't let your brain go any further than that. Okay. And what I want you to do is I want you to pause. Now, no, nobody's reporting this, but on Pravda, WikiLeaks, they also confirmed the U.S. secret bunker, the Gulf of Aden vortex has contact been made. And that was reported on 8 12 of 2010. What is Pravda? It is actually Russia's um, essentially internet newspaper. It's not a propaganda outlet such as, you know, what RT.com would be expected to be putting out. Uh, but guess what? The polar vortex, uh, I'm sorry, the polar vortex, the Gulf of Aden uh, vortex in the Norway vo- vortex, the spiral, was published on RT.com. Now, nobody's this made this connection here other than us. Here, here missile in the White Sea has failed. The announcement comes after Norwegian authorities reported strange lights seen in the Arctic sky, but the Russian Defense Ministry have not linked the two incidents. RT Sean Thomas has more on this. A spectacular and mysterious phenomenon brightening the Norwegian sky sends the country into a frenzy of speculation. We had a lot of media contacting us, and we have tried to uh, and investigated uh, during the day. And uh, for the time being, we are not sure uh, still about what this uh, object uh, is, or and the information that we do have on the object is uh, restricted information. Barring an alien invasion or some dynamic celestial event, scientists began their search for an explanation a bit closer to home. It looks very much like... Uh, a rocket that has started to uh, cone, in a sense, it means like it, it rotates uh, in a zigzag manner such that uh, uh, you make... So, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. The Norwegian Space Center came forward and said it had to do with a rocket. Pay no attention to that. The reason why I'm bringing this report to you is for one reason and one reason only. The mainstream media is not talking about these connections here, especially as it relates to Yemen, uh, the Gulf of Aden. Nobody is talking about this, but they're all individually within their disciplines talking about either a Norway uh, vortex to talk about the Gulf of Aden with respect to the Somali pirates. They're positioning ships there that's already been revealed in the cables. And guess what else? And CERN itself, the CERN scientists are referring to, and this is not conspiracy theory, the Large Hadron Collider could detect extra dimensions this was published on march 19 2015 we have all of the world's scientists uh, one of whom as a matter of fact the uh, the link lady uh, uh lexi cole uh joins me right now we've been doing this research uh when we looked on the uh wikipedia site uh and we read on wikipedia that cern there's something interesting about the nation of israel that we just reported moments ago that they've pulled out on all of their embassies Why is Israel listed and is unique in this CERN venture that's going on with all these scientists? Um, CERN in 2014 was the first uh, outside European country to join CERN. It's all been 21. Israel. Or Israel. I'm sorry. Israel. Outside of the 21 European countries that are already involved. Okay. So Israel. Israel was important relating to this Middle East conflict, obviously. Yes. Uh, relating to Yemen right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, this conflict just days prior, they pulled out all of their embassies. So these are just anomalies and facts that we wanted to bring uh, to your attention. But ultimately, here it is. Uh, in the Gulf of Aden, okay, uh, we've seen earthquakes uh, shaking in Somalia and Yemen. There's been pictures, overhead satellite images of vortexes, uh, as well as CERN kicking up um, for the purposes, per the scientists, this isn't per us, to detect many black holes at the LHC and to also contact extra dimensions. Are these portals? Are these openings? You have to decide for yourself. We will provide uh, all of these links and as uh, GMN Kenny says, if you don't know who he is, of course, tune in to the Pete Santilli show uh, each and every day. You need to Google this stuff up. You need to take a look at what's happening between the Saudis uh, as well as Yemen. Why is Yemen important? It's near the Gulf of Aden. Why is the Gulf of Aden important? It has been for many years as far as these vortexes uh, that are opening up. There are Navy ships. It is being reported by WikiLeaks and confidential cables. Is this stuff all connected? 
We don't know. One thing we do know is no one has ever provided a report connecting all of these things for you, which tells me this is exactly where we need to be looking. So I'm Pete Santilli reporting to you. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be we'll be covering this in more detail. Be, su be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, uh, like, comment, and share of this information as possible, especially the links that I provide down below. Uh, but you guys, uh, just stay alert and especially tune in uh, to the Pete Santilli Show Monday through uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern. And most importantly, keep your eyes and ears tuned on the stuff that they're not talking about. That's what this report was been about. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll talk to you during the show.